So you want your comic to look a little bit more manga-like and you got Photoshop or something similar, well please watch this video throughout the whole thing. I know it's kind of long, it's 20 minutes, but that means I'm trying to make sure I give you all the tools to get started. Hey, welcome back. This is Citria, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A, and I'm coming back to you guys with a toning tutorial. A couple of requests have been made through my 100 days of making comics, so here's one of them, and that is how I get that screen tone, manga tone-like effect for my comic. So I'll be using Photoshop and using my main character from my webcomic, Cross Star, and I'm going to do two versions of it just so you can get a sense of light versus dark tone style and either one works whatever goes or whatever your taste or style so definitely go and look up some of your own manga comics that you have in your collection and that you like and perhaps use it as a style reference so yeah as you can see right here um it's not just the starting out with dropping in tones but doing the difference between how much ink or how many darkness or dark spots or spot blacks there's various words for it that you start with your artwork so your inking really needs to start um, kind of giving you the direction of where the lights and darks are for yourself and if you have more questions about you know inking with lights and darks and spot blacks and stuff please leave your comments and your questions below or any other kind of questions for comics so First off, I am just going to go ahead and pick just a bit of color variations or grayscale gradations. And I pick these kind of scale mostly so that way there's enough difference between each of the shades of contrast. So as when it's printed, especially when it's printed, you can actually see the difference between the colors. So pretty much I tend to do a difference between about 20 percent, 20, 20 to 25 percent between the um, colors. And I usually pick or use about three shades of gray, but sometimes I might use all five. And your darkest dark does not have to be black other than your inking. And your lightest light does not have to be 10 percent. It's all in all in your preference and perhaps in the style of your comic so if you're doing something lighthearted, of course you want to do lighter tones or if you're doing something moody dark maybe like a horror or um like a dark fantasy or something like that you might want to use darker darks so here i'm just putting in a general uh, percentage um and that's just mostly to hopefully clarify it for you guys but you know 100 black saturation versus 50 percent versus 10 percent and again that's just so you can get the difference i tend to use the um the second to darkest so kind of like the 75 percent and then i tend to use a 30 percent and a 10 percent so here i'm going to go ahead and colorize or shade in some of the colors i'm just showing to you right here real quick um that you want to perhaps use your ink your liner on top and set it to multiply or use your screen tone um, or your gray shading layer and set that to multiply i personally prefer the inks to be set to multiply so I'm going to go ahead and start painting out my lovely chibi characters real quick. So the tools that I'm using for shading is basically, you know, a hard round brush, just going in and just filling out the shapes. Um, sometimes I use the fill bucket tool. Sometimes I use um, eraser tool, just whatever you normally do for put it in your colors or filling in your colors is pretty much the same so nothing too fancy about that so as you can see i'm just going as quick as possible just adding things in and testing things out to see if there's enough contrast making some of the shading or drop shadow um shades and quite frankly depending on what kind of um, style of manga or comic that you're following you might not need to add all that extra layers of shading but that's just a style preference for me um in true manga tone fashion, um, especially the older you go, like the older school or the older style comics may not have all of this toning simply because of the amount of work that it takes to um, sit there and cut all those pieces and layering all those pieces. But hey, this is digital and sometimes you need to update on things. So yeah, I'm just going to go in and fill out the different 
shades of my characters. Like you can see the darker line art or the line art with the more blacks. I went in with a heavier shade of tones. And of course, I go in and use the selection tool and maybe add some gradations here. And so far, as you can tell, there is none of that screen tone dot effect. And that's for the most part for my comic. It's just much quicker to go ahead and just do all of, you know, the painting and whatnot. So if you really want to make yourself look painterly versus like just a regular manga you can so whatever that you're normally used to for shading um your comic or your store your um illustrations is the way to go i just would advise again not to go too crazy with the blending and the shading because you lose that style that flat manga um style because again you got to recall that the way they used to do it is they actually would cut up pieces of sticky film to paste on their character so right quick, um, where you're seeing this red is just an option that I think several programs have, but in particular for Photoshop, this is like a quick masking tool. So say you don't want to make like a clip or you don't want to have an actual permanent masking layer and you just want to do something quick. Um, the hotkey for that is Q, but basically it's a little, little square with a circle underneath where the color picker squares are. And that's basically what that is. And you just kind of switch between modes. Um, and I think you can pick what kind of color it looks and you can tell on the highlighter, the layer it's highlighted in red to just let you know that you're in a quick masking, quick masking mode instead. And what it does is, especially for weird kind of like selection areas, or in my case, I tend to have broken lines a lot. Um, I tend to use that a lot and then just go in and start adding my shading and my toning. But yes, real quick guys, I'm just gonna make a quick mention that I would consider myself a little bit um, more advanced than a beginner. I would say an intermediate or like a fan comic or not a fan comic, but a hobby comic artist. So I would like to suggest real quick, uh, perhaps after you're done with this video, to go ahead and check out some people who's been doing it for a much longer time. You have quite a few people that do a number of manga style artwork and have kept to the older style of manga. You have My Mangaka Life, the artist of Sacred. You have White Manga. You have Doki Doki Club, which is actually a group of people who are, are are currently living in Japan and there's a number of other people so there's either a link on the video or a link in the description so moving right along I am skipping to this part where you can actually make any kind of thing into a tone so long as it has a very high contrast so the original color I just grabbed a pattern but the original color of this pattern was in a sort of like blue teal pink whatever but the point is it had a lot of contrast and once you turn it into grayscale you can mess around with its levels and whatnot and you can see that it's captured a lot of its textures and stuff like that so let's say you had your own original pattern or you found a cute little pattern somewhere or even if you're using like um, digital backgrounds or whatnot the point of it is that you just need a high enough contrast in the artwork and it to be nicely clean scanned or cleanly created and you can make some really cute little things as your tone so all those pretty tones that you see in shoujo manga with like florals and um yeah patterns in the dress and whatnot this is basically where you start with it and i'm assuming that's how they started making tones to begin with so yeah if you want to create your own tones this is a step so like i said make sure it's in black and white make sure the levels are well done and nice and tight and you can mess around with it keep it in gray scale then what you want to do is make sure you go into image mode grayscale and any program can be switched into grayscale now this part I'm assuming is particular to Photoshop. I don't know about other programs. After you switch it to grayscale, you need to go into image mode bitmap. You have to change your image into grayscale before you go into bitmap. And from there, you'll see a pop-up screen where it'll say input, um, output. You wanna keep it to the same DPI and the minimum DPI is 300. And then on the method, you get several options. You can threshold it um, and you could, you know, do different kind of different kind of patterns you could diamond it start which gets really weird but I always pick half tones because that's the other or the more English or American or Western way of calling screen tones is half tones after that you're going to see an option whether it's 60 line density or 50 something versus 45 I always keep it at 45 and I usually give it at 60 degree density or 72 degree density and that's basically talking about how dense or how much black per square inch and I come up with those 
those numbers because if you ever if you have ever bought Deleter or um, Hoblin or whatever screen tone company from Japan, they actually tell you what the number of the density of that screen tone so you can recreate it. And I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick what I mean by just giving you an image of a scan of that screen tone. So moving right along ahead, after you've copy and paste your image of your custom pattern, you can go ahead and place it into the artwork. Um, in here, I'm showing you an actual masking version. So this is not a quick mask, this is the permanent masking. And I like to use masking versus plopping in and erasing it because let's say you have some edges that you miss or say you want to use the tone in multiple places, you can go in and just edit the actual masking part versus the actual image and you know you don't end up losing image quality or image information at that point so now that we've had our lovely lovely artwork all nicely toned in and stuff we got to add back in the highlights right the highlights now there are more advanced techniques for highlights but we're gonna keep this basic after all this is a one-on-one or beginner's tutorial for um, screen toning in Photoshop um, how you highlight is really dependent on your style so I'm just using a basic round brush and I added a layer on top of the tone layer but underneath the inking layer hence why I like the inking layer to be on top and just kind of called the layer white and just started painting in the the highlights just nice and quickly adding in highlights um, where you add highlights and like what direction you add lighting and stuff is definitely a topic for another video so let me know if that is something you guys would be interested in um, talking about highlights or talking about inking versus highlights whatever floats your boat and again this is just a basic round eraser that I'm just going in and cutting in some highlights now moving along to a little bit of a fun part is adding that airbrush kind of quality. Now this can be kind of annoying or tricky or just weird. Um, and it all depends on it, just how authentic you want to get it to be. But basically, basically what you want to do is have a soft round brush, like a basic soft round brush. Make sure you set it to dissolve in its blending layer. And from then on, you can just adjust it as you go with the opacity, adjust it with the flow. Um, and perf you know, preferably what I prefer is to turn off the sizing because that gets to be real. It's, it, once you mess with around with that brush, you'll get to understand what I'm trying to put to words on the feeling. But uh, what I'm trying to do is get the brush to be in a nice soft gradation. So messing around with hardness while at the same time trying to make sure that it actually deposits enough white. So you can see I'm adjusting the opacity, doing all sorts of things where it looks like it was um, either airbrush or what the original method of doing this was actually taking like a hard eraser or a pen eraser or some kind of eraser and erasing off the tone. So this is the effect that I'm attempting to get down and I do tend to use it. Usually though, what end up happening or what I tend to do is during I during the edit of the gray layer, I just go ahead and blend out the edges so that way when I change it into a tone where you get the dot tones, you won't have to deal with that. But I figured this was a good little thing if ever you guys want to do it in this method. And here I'm zooming in and you can see that all this brush is depositing is hard white and white pixels so no blending pixels you don't see any other shade of color besides that gray and that pixel and this is a very important part if you're trying to get to that look you definitely want to keep to hard colors hard shapes not blending things into each other this isn't a painting this is literally just dot gray tone now Printing qualities and printing capabilities are definitely capable of printing in that blended grayscale color, but you'd be losing the look of that whole manga style or old school manga style. So this is the main reason why you have to keep things in a hard tone because you're trying to kind of mimic the limitations of technology back then. Back then, you could only print in solid black and white and toning is kind of like a cheat for that. So 
definitely want to try this out see if it is in your preference hopefully you guys have enjoyed this quick little tutorial of mine and definitely leave comments on below but before we close out let me do the final steps that i had shown you while we were working on the custom pattern tones and that is transitioning or changing the grayscale into a dot pattern and just just before that you can see i did made a different white layer on top of the ink layer and using that dithering or that soft brush I'm going in and softening some of the line art so you can come up with a lot of effects and there's a lot more other effects that I have done over the years but this video is already going quite long so let's go ahead and start transitioning this grayscale into a bip map screen tone style so while I'm showing you guys some lovely eye candy of me just adding some extra bits to this illustration and making it appealing, I just wanted to let you guys know again that about Crossstar and that is a sci-fi fantasy adventure comic. So feel free to take a read and tell me your thoughts about it. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, going back to this illustration for the final, final touches. So as you can see here, I made sure to transition this image into grayscale. And with that, I am just doing a quick copy of all that I have seen in here, turning off the ink layer. And that is very important because you kind of don't want your ink edges to be all feathery. So I tend to turn off the ink layer and just leave the tone layer. And from there, I turned that layer from grayscale to bitmap, keeping it at 60 to 45 degree angles. And then copy, paste, or rather copy, and then edit, undo, edit, undo until you go back to having your layers and then pasting it over. Right now, I'm just doing a bit of cleaning because I tend to like to keep clean layers. So I go ahead and merge all of my grayscales into one layer. And from there, I go ahead and paste on my bitmap or my halftone screen layer into the image and then turn on the inks and voila. So just a quick little recap, as I said, you just go ahead and paste in or draw in your grays like you normally would, but in solid shapes. Then after that, make sure your documents in grayscale layer. Then of course, copying your grayscale layer, making that into a bitmap and keeping it to the 6040. In general, want to keep, make sure that your difference in shades are strong enough. And of course, going in and just doing maybe little final little touches. And of course, that brush would be really helpful here. It's already dithered and you could go in and cross it, hatch and whatnot. And by all means, if you have any questions or comments or requests, leave them down in the comments below. All the best, you guys. Thanks for watching.